Welcome to Woodside Road United Methodist Church. My name is Katie and it is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you here in this belated late live or belated recording. It's not really a live stream. We ran into recording difficulties once again, this time not in the recording, but in getting things out to onto the internet. Um, we still haven't quite figured out what went wrong there, but I am glad that you are joining us and that you are here with us for our final Sunday on creation care. Our Psalm this week is gonna be Psalm 124, where we remember that our help is in the name of the Lord who is maker of heaven and earth. Thank you for worshiping with us and we look forward to getting it right next week, hopefully. Amen. share with you first. And I know that we're doing this from far away, and one day we'll figure out how to do this from up close, but we're going to do it from far away today. This book is called Stand Up, Speak
Speak Up, a story inspired by the climate change revolution. And this is looking at all of the kids around the world who are working to address the climate crises that we are facing. So it begins with wake up. You're going to discover a theme. There aren't a lot of original words in this story. There's a lot of up in it. Wake up, dress up, drink up, eat up, meet up. And you can see our, our young hero here meeting up with all of her buddies. They've got their signs with them and an enthusiastic puppy dog. And then it says signs up. And all of these kids are saying things, don't burn our dreams, I love trains, united by nature, guided by science, it's our future, change my future, action now, eat more vegetables, and a nod to the Lorax that we talked about last week, I speak for the trees. And then they say, rise up, cheer up, Finish up, all of these kids head home. And then we're back to dinner time. We started with breakfast. We've got eat up, drink up, stay up. They are watching as a family a report on the rally, the local news. Coming up. And then the next story on the news is one that we would be familiar with. There's raging wildfires. The author of the book is from Australia, which dealt with raging wildfires a year or so ago. And then the trash in the ocean, hurricane flooding, or maybe flooding from other reasons. And our, our young hero here, she is, she is disappointed because, well, they just had this a powerful rally. Rest up. And there she is, unable to sleep. She's still up. Think up. Write up. She's sitting at her desk. She goes in and wakes her mom and dad up in the middle of the night, because there's nothing you want more as a parent than to talk about the climate crisis at 3 o'clock in the morning, right? No ideas. Those of you who aren't in person, my own kid is sitting right over there. Listen up. So she, she shares her speech with her parents. And then turn up. They're at town hall. They're headed to the city council meeting. Stand up. Speak up. Hands up. Everybody's raising their hands to say, we hear you. And then it's sign up. And here, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, but instead of just showing up at the rally with the signs, now they've got show up again. And so across here we have people getting ready to plant trees, the beach cleanup team. Kind of like our library, there's, there's a beekeeper on the roof. cleaning up, composting, community garden, and then renewable energy, zero waste, no plastic straws, cut CO2, save our planet, swap and mend, and all of the different ways that people, and especially young people, are inspiring our care of creation. And there's even in the back, and I'll have this here for folks after service, stories about what young people all over the world are doing to care for our planet. And so as we send our young people to Sunday school, we send you knowing that the planet is yours. And we appreciate every time you call on us, adults, to care for the planet. And you remind us that it's not our planet. It's your planet. And so you are invited now to go to Sunday school.
we do the technological swap as well. I appreciate that it takes people of all ages and stages to make worship and Sunday school happen here. Let us pray. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, friends, as an unofficial policy, I don't share memes on Facebook. I'm not against memes. They're just not my thing. And so if you and I are connected on Facebook, you'll see me share stuff that kind of falls into four categories. I'll share stuff related to the church here. I'll share stuff going on in our community, pictures of my kids, and over the last year and a half, COVID-related news. I spent a lot of time sharing, like, look, San Mateo County brought back its mask mandate. It just turns out that's what's on my mind. Friends, I can't wait until the day that it's not worth posting COVID-related news on Facebook anymore. I'm ready. We can be done. Now, friends, if you're not connected with me on Facebook and you would like to be because what you need are more pictures of my kids, let me know. If you just want to know the church stuff and you don't want to mess with pictures of my kids, you can like the church Facebook page. Okay, clearly I've digressed. But friends, if I did share memes, this past week I would have shared one of the young Harry Potter, this is like book one, two-ish movie, Hermione Granger and Ron Weasley standing in front of none other than Professor McGonagall. And across each of these kids is listed California, Texas, and Florida. And the question being asked by McGonagall is, why is it when something happens, it's always you three? And I don't post memes in part because I would talk back to them, and that's not the point of a meme because I would want to answer, well, because more than a quarter of the U.S. population lives in those three states, so of course it's always these three, right? It's where the people are. Again, defeating the purpose of the meme. But when I think about the damage being brought on our country by climate change, whether it's drought and wildfire here in California, hurricanes or freezing temperatures that disrupt the power supply in other states, we don't have to look much larger than these three large states one of which we call home, to see the damage that we're causing our Earth. Right? These three states, they, they kind of paint a picture of what's happening everywhere. Now, in addition to the Harry, Hermione, and Ron meme, I've also been thinking about some of the memes that my family members have been posting recently on Facebook. Family members, they share all kinds of things on Facebook, don't they? Everything, right? And if your family is like my family, it contains people across the political spectrum and across the religious spectrum, and across some other spectrums that we don't even know about, but we cover it, it's like a rainbow. And recently in my family, there has been a bit of jumping on the separation of church and state bandwagon in Facebook. Things like there are three branches of government and the Bible isn't one of them, which fits right alongside the bumper sticker that's on a car that's regularly parked on Roosevelt. I don't know how many of you drive on Roosevelt on a regular basis, but when I bike there, I catch this bumper sticker that says, tax churches build schools, which just makes me want to point out that RCSD closed four school campuses two years ago, but now really I've gone down a rabbit hole. Because it turns out, friends, I spend a lot of time thinking about the role of the church in our world. I am of the public school era when we didn't open the school day with prayer, I think that's closer to my mom's era where you might do the Pledge of Allegiance and then everybody says the Lord's Prayer together or something and then you go about your school day. That's not my school era, but it was certainly okay to make Christmas tree ornaments when I was in elementary school. And friends, I thought that we had left this era of Christmas tree ornaments in school except that this past December, one of my daughter's assignments in class was to write a letter to Santa. And I was slightly horrified, because not everybody does Santa. 
And I want the public sphere to be a place where we learn about each other's traditions and we are invited to participate in each other's traditions. But I'm still a little caught off guard by giving the class the assignment for everybody to write a letter to Santa. Because I have this firm belief that our public institutions should not privilege one religious tradition over another, as much as I like my religious tradition. But alongside of this belief that Christmas tree ornaments and Santa don't belong in school, I am also firmly of the belief that as people of faith in general and as followers of Jesus in particular, we have something and hopefully something bold to say to the world. Friends, I think that as followers of Jesus, we sometimes get quiet because we don't want to be that kind of Christian. Have you ever not wanted to be that kind of Christian? The kind of Christian that draws you know, a lot of attention because you're making a lot of noise and, and all of that. Or maybe we think if we just live by the words, they'll know we are Christians by our love. That will do. Right? If we go out and we just love and we love lots, that's, that's our witness. As we close our time dedicated to creation care, and just because we're going to shift our focus next month from creation care to stewardship a little more specifically focused on finances and money, that doesn't mean that we stop caring about creation. In fact, I'd argue what we do with our money has a direct bearing on how we care for creation. But as we close out this dedicated time to creation care, I want us to think about what it means to live as folks who follow Jesus in our private and in our public lives. What does it mean to follow Jesus with our hearts and with our actions? Friends, there is one building on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. that isn't a government building. Did you know that? All of Capitol Hill is government buildings, except for one building. Do you know what building is on Capitol Hill that isn't a government building? It is the United Methodist Building. Did you guys know that? So the United Methodist Building is home to the General Board of Church and Society, the United Methodist Women, the Methodist Council of Bishops, and a number of ecumenical and interreligious organizations. It's a pretty big building, so there's a lot of folks with their offices in there. The building, which has been there for nearly 100 years, stands as a witness and a launching ground for five areas of focus of the General Board of Church and Society. Poverty, health, civil and human rights, peace, and climate. Those are these five areas of focus that the work of the General Board focuses on. When it comes to the climate, General Secretary Susan Henry Crow recently wrote, it is time that we as people of faith committed our churches and the systems with which we work to actively focus our vision, energy, resources, and commitments on climate justice. Reverend Dr. Henry Crow then goes on to share these words from theologian Ted Runyon. Wesley understood God's goal as the transformation of this present age, restoring health and holiness to God's creation. God, therefore, enters into the life of the world to renew the creature after the divine image and the creation after the divine will. I'll read that again. God, therefore, enters into the life of the world to renew the creature after the divine image and the creation after the divine will. We've talked in recent weeks about how we are made in the image of God and the responsibility that that image carries. And if we are made in the image of God, then we are tasked over and over again with doing God's work in the world, for tending to God's creation as carefully as God tended to that first garden a garden that supported those first human beings and, well, the rest of creation as well. The psalmist this morning used images from creation, destructive images from creation, to illustrate what life apart from God looks like. The psalmist says, if the Lord hadn't been for us, if the Lord hadn't been for us, 
well, things would have been a hot mess. And then the psalmist concludes, our help is in the name of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. From the very beginning of our Bibles, we recognize and affirm that God is the maker of heaven and earth. And our call as followers of Jesus is to live in response to that. This means living our faith publicly, being willing to speak out and resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves, as our baptismal vows remind us and to do that especially in response to the climate crisis and the need for climate justice. As much as we see climate change playing out right in front of us, wildfires that hit way too close to home, increased temperatures, record-setting and not in a good way droughts, we also know that the climate crises will hit our neighbors on the economic margins more severely than those of us who call more affluent communities home. Whether that's on a micro level within our own neighborhoods where affluent communities have more trees and therefore the temperature is lower than in communities that don't. Um, I remember earlier this summer looking at the temperature across the city of Portland when their temperature spiked so high back at the very beginning of the summer. And within the city of Portland, there was like a 20 degree difference from one place to another based on how many trees were there. Or you could do this on your own, like if you go to like a weather, one of those weather station apps or websites or whatever, and you look at the difference between the temperature at like Sequoia Station, which is all parking lots, and then up by the park, it's huge, right? Like we know that trees make a difference. So that's on kind of a micro level where we can think about climate change. But we can also think about climate change in terms of the bigger issues of things like sea level rise or where it is that we locate freeways and power, power plants and all of this. The climate justice, there's lots of different levels where you can think about are we doing justice in terms of how we structure our communities. And friends, these are all places where we are called to speak out. Whether we do it like the children in the book we shared a little while ago, or we do it by calling and writing our elected officials, we do it by how we vote, or the changes we make within our own personal lives, but addressing the climate justice issues, it turns out, goes beyond what I do in my personal life, right? Like, I may dry my clothes outside during the summer, but we're losing the sunlight in the backyard, and now it takes almost three days to dry a load of clothes outside. Friends, I can't, I can't sustain that. <laughs> One day Daniel's gonna change the house to electric, and we'll have an electric dryer powered by the solar panels we don't have yet, but again, I digress. Friends, if we truly believe that our help is in the name of the Lord, the one who is maker of heaven and earth, then we are called to renew creation after the divine will. And we are called to participate each and every day in that work of renewal. I started out this morning talking about means and the separation of church and state. But we need to remember that that separation doesn't absolve us as a part of the church from participating in the work of the state. This doesn't mean making everyone adhere to our set of beliefs. It does mean remembering that as followers of Jesus, we are tasked with some pretty specific work, caring for our brothers, sisters, and siblings by caring for this planet we call home. I want to close with these words from the late poet Mary Oliver. She writes an essay called Upstream, and she's going to talk about some wildflowers and so you might want to picture California wildflowers as I name these different kinds of wildflowers. She writes, teach the children. We don't matter so much, but the children do. Show them daisies and pale hepatica. Teach them the taste of sassafras and wintergreen. The lives of the blue sailors, mallow, sunbursts, the moccasin flowers and the frisky ones, 
inkberry, lamb's quarters, blueberries, and the aromatic ones, rosemary, oregano. Give them peppermint to put in their pockets as they go to school. Give them fields and the woods and the possibility of the world salvaged from the lords of profit. Stand them in the stream. Head them upstream. Rejoice as they learn to love this green space they live in. Its sticks and leaves and then the silent, beautiful blossom. Attention is the beginning of devotion. And may all of us pay attention that we might enter into relationship with the earth with devotion. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. And our hymn is, All Praise My Maker While I've Breath. You are invited as you are willing and able to stand and hum if you are in person with us. If you are worshiping online, you are invited to sing out with gusto. God of delight, your wisdom sings your word at the crossroads where humanity and divinity meet. We remember how you called forth creation from the void, revealing yourself in Jesus and pouring forth your wisdom to guide us. You manifest your concern for the whole universe and invite us into your joyful being. We marvel at your care for us, even though we are so small by comparison. May we live as your beloved children, tending to the creation that you entrust to us. May we reflect your glory in faith that acts, in hope that doesn't disappoint, and in love that endures. Amen. And now let us continue to pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us continue in prayer. God, heaven declares your glory, and the sky proclaims your handiwork. Our help is in your name, maker of heaven and earth. One day gushes the news of what you've done to the next. Our help is in your name, maker of heaven and earth. The night tells tomorrow what needs to be known. Our help is in your name, maker of heaven and earth. Day and night, earth and sky, we give you thanks for all the wonders of creation. Our help is in your name, maker of heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. Our hymn is Sarah Nam, Sarah Nam. Before we sing this, we say goodbye and God bless to those of you worshiping over YouTube. We thank you for your patience as we had a rocky start this morning, but we are glad that you are with us. And now you are invited again to stand and hum with gusto in person and sing out at home. Jesus said.